recording. I think you need to turn off your mic. Turn off. We're not going to get very good audio. Feedback. 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 Feedback.
compared, I mean, Jen and I need to sit down and, and confirm all of this, but year to date, um, I'm showing us um, at 381,000, which is just about um, 8,000 behind what I had projected for your all sales last year. And again, these are Chartwell's numbers. So just wanna make that very clear. Um, currently, Tammy's running about a 40% uh, program cost at 152,865. Um, 40 is my target date in a regular non COVID year without the number of prepackaged or items that we're packaging. We could probably get that number down between 36 and 38%, but with the, the amount of paper and or individual packaged items that we're using, that's up just a little bit. Um, our personnel cost is at 42%. Again, that 40 is kind of my, um, you know, magic number as it goes to as far as labor would go within our uh, within the food service operation. Um, we are up a little bit. Again, um, just with the learning models and the packing and the way that we're displaying the food and and serving the food, some of those things have changed for us. So they tend to be just a little bit more labor intensive, but Tammy's done really an amazing job at keeping that where it needs to be a 2% difference on, um, you know, that much money is, is, you know, a drop in the bucket when we're taking care of our kids. So, um, you know, we obviously don't want to think that we're not managing your dollars, but there is going to be a little bit more just because uh, the learn the way the model is is more labor intensive. But Tammy's done an excellent job. Um, and then of course we have other costs which are sitting right about 19%. And those are um, anything like um, our management fees, um, our our management costs, um, any kind of training that we've done, telephone expense. Um, software that we use, computer, you know, the computer um, uh, maintenance, cleaning supplies, any of those kinds of things, so random. And again, that's right where it needs to be. So right now we're showing the program as a positive of about 17,000. I um, am pleased with any kind of positive um, result in, in my district anywhere in Minnesota or Wisconsin this year, just because of you know, the way the learning models changed, having access to less students, not having access to do as many a la carte sales as we're used to. I mean, just kind of all of those things. But then of course the positive side of that is we're getting more per meal and we're able to give kids free breakfast to everyone who wants it. So, um, you know, our breakfast sales would be up because of that. So um, overall, I'm pleased with the way the program's running. I hope you all too. Um, but I, I would like to point out that, you know, I just am, um, again, very proud of the program here and what Tammy's done with her team to, you know, make the distribution and the meals during the pandemic and to be able to adjust on a moment's notice and to always say yes, it's, uh, it's refreshing. Um, and then um, just also with her, uh, try, you know, keeping the food service program as consistent as possible during this time, again, with all the changes. Um, so I, I would close in saying that, you know, we have a strong dedicated leader um, who's committed to the district and the staff, and I'm here to back her up. Um, but is there anything else I can tell you about the program or you'd like to hear from Tammy about? I don't know who you are. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I mean, I, I, you're the Chartwell representative. Yeah, I am. So I don't know who Chartwell is. I'm, oh, okay. From what you said, you must be the food. Yes. Food so I'm right. sorry that I should have. Let me take a step back. My name is Jerry Crater. Um, I am a district manager for Chartwell's K through 12. We are currently your um, food service vendor or contractor. And um, how many years have you been here, Tammy? Twenty two or twenty three. So 23. Um, we really. It's been a long time. time. And I even be twenty five. And I'm new to my role. Um, I obviously I met Tim and Howard on, on many occasions. I believe I met Scott last year. Um, Kirk, I believe I met last year, and we met mm -hmm. last year. Um, so this is only my second year, and I'm I'm been in my role a year and a half. So your district and actually all Minnesota and Wisconsin are new to me. Um, but 
Uh, so does that answer your question as far as who we are and what we do for you? So there's been a long-standing partnership there. That's highly important. So I'm assuming you're a new board member. So welcome. They have some new members. But, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, questions. I, I, uh, no, that's fine. I, I just, just uh, I guess, gathered it in the way. So you you'll see me when when and if you need me. My role is my primary role is to back up Tammy and make sure that she's getting um, the support and um, direction she needs from the Chartwell's organization. Yeah, but still doing is it still it's still free breakfast and lunch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you want to explain. Okay. Yes, uh, it's a it's a free yeah. the free lunch and breakfast to all students within the district, mm -hmm. and, that's and it's 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 federal, federal. Okay. and it's going to go throughout the whole school year. Yeah. So we'll yeah. take that into the end of June, yeah. um, and it's kind of unprecedented, obviously because of the pandemic. So we're very grateful the USDA um, passed that um, when we were starting this. Kind of, well, we didn't get that one for the school year until late in August, but then you're then the state of Wisconsin adopted it. So it really does give us an opportunity to get meals into kids' hands that might not otherwise get it. And is there <clears throat> likely that it'll end or some discussion for any support for the following year from the federal? So of course we wish that we could do this all the time just because of um, you know we see the need in our community. Um and Families tend to, you know, not want to participate in the free and reduced or the free programs and those kinds of things. So with this, you know, it's just um, what it's just a really it's a gift. Um, but what we're hearing is that it'll end at the end of this year, which would be June 30th. So we would love to see it go into next year. Um, I mean, if you know, not knowing, of course, I wish I had a crystal ball, but. Um, we were hoping last summer when we were in the midst of it that they would take it into this school year. Um, but, you know, we'd also like to be able to bring some more stuff back to the kids. And um, so depending upon how they relax those regulations, but it would be nice. I mean, it would be nice if we could stay at this feeding model all the time. It'd be great for community banking. When I look at our enrollment numbers, we have almost a third of our virtual education students enrolled in the groups. How does that work? And a lot of those students, I don't believe, are even here in our area. How, do, how does that work? So there's a couple of different things, and I'm going to speak to one point, and then I'm going to turn it over to Tim. So. Um, with the way the waiver is written, and they can go to their, literally to their closest school and participate in their meal program. So they've really taken away any barriers that we have to feed the kids, um, whether it's geographical or, um, I mean, anything, right? Like if, if you wanted to go to the next school district over because you like their meal box better than maybe what we're producing here, we hope you don't, but um, <laughs> it happens. Um, then, then you can certainly do that, or their hours for pickup, work in your family schedule better, or any of those kinds of things. So, um, the whole idea is really to get food into kids' hands in any way, shape, or form that we can. Um, some districts and everybody does it a little bit different. It really does depend upon your leadership and what you're looking for. But what the USDA does allow us to do is do meal boxes, and they can come and pick them up. Um, they just can't double dip. Like if their kids are in school two days, they can't get a seven day box or, you know, those kinds of things. So we've really just tried to open it up to be able to touch as many kids as possible. So it really is at the end of the day, it's their choice. You can't make them take in. What the communities that are opening up, all the students come from. Mm -hmm. And no it was possible reason, way that Sam's going to get the milk out of the water. No, yeah, that's what I mean. So they can just literally go to their neighborhood school. So, in your mentioned, you know, 
you know, how big is your region? How many schools are in your region? And then how many of those are like in person full time? So I have 18 districts um, and I have six in Wisconsin and 12 in Minnesota. So I'm literally kind of all over both states. So I go all the way over to, you know, like the Green Bay side, Appleton, um, Menasha, those districts over there. And then of course, I'm pretty far west in Minnesota. So, um, and south. Um, and every, honestly, Tim, every learning model is a little bit different. The focus out there seems to be getting kids back in school. Um, I will tell you that um, you all are ahead of the game as far as a keeping your kids in school and then getting them back or dealing with any kind of outbreak. Um, I have some districts that are still, I would say maybe, I mean, we'll be lucky if the secondary kids come back at the end of May or March. So, um, you know, we want to see kids in school. I mean, that, it, it just is our so major. Kids can provide meals for the most part, kind of like we did last spring. Yes, and so we do a lot of that. We're still doing a lot of boxes in our, the ones that I'm gonna tell you, I mean, are, that are doing most, being most successful with it are the ones who are literally putting those boxes on their buses and taking them out into the communities. We found that um, they don't want to come and get them. You know, I mean, it's it's been um, difficult to, I mean, if we have it, you know, them there waiting for them. We don't get the distribution numbers that that we would have liked to have seen. So um, we're every learning model I have. So some are just back, you know, like K through three. Some are next week bringing back four and five, and then you know they're going into a progression. But I would say probably a good third of my schools don't have their second. More questions for uh, Tiny Gray? I guess I'd make a comment that I'd like to commend Tammy for the, the wonderful job she's done, yeah. especially it's yeah. she did stepping forward last spring, uh, almost a year ago, that this whole thing started. And uh, I remember meeting that first Saturday uh, to get all our ducks in a row for the uh, shutdown. We were done a pretty amazing job of getting the food out to the community, and, uh, getting packed, and keeping everybody safe, and for providing good nutritious meals uh, for the schools uh, throughout the year. And uh, we've been able to keep going and do in person school, which is what the community wanted, and keep us safe, which is what the staff wanted. May not necessarily be all the choices that everybody wants, but uh, we've been getting a good, uh, healthy meal. Really appreciate that. So, on behalf of the board, I'll, I'll thank you for your job. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank thank you Howard. That means yeah. a lot yeah. to us. I mean, it, 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 the amount of work has been, you know, she's, she's remarkable. So, we're lucky, lucky, lucky to have her. Well, it, it doesn't go on there. Well, thank you. Nice to hear it. Yeah, and I have got. I can't tell you the excellent staff I have. I just have been very fortunate to have very dedicated staff too, because they're all willing to do whatever it takes to get stuff done. So yeah, we truly appreciate that for the yeah. school. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for allowing us to be your partner. We really appreciate it. And um, obviously you know Tim is here for whatever you need, and I'm just the phone call in. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda, we have financial reports from our treasurer, Scott Rowe. Bank account balances as of January 31st, 2021. Citizen state checking, $560,847.23. Citizen state money market, $3,028,908.15. Citizen state money market fund, $46,53.05. Citizen state bank money market suicide prevention fund, $16,496.47. Total bank account balances of $3,606,304.90. Okay. With that, we have a uh, what would you like to do with the treasurer's report? Motion to accept the treasurer's report as presented. Motion Kirk, do I have a second? Second. We have a motion, Scott, second. Brian, to accept the treasurer's report as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is consideration of the consent agenda, which consists of approval of our meeting minutes from our January 25th meeting, the February 8th meeting, approval of the bi monthly bill for February 2021, approval of resignations and retirements of Don Moan, sixth grade social studies teacher. Terry West, our third grade elementary school teacher, uh, approval of uh, curricular modification requests to enroll in full time and part time virtual ed, which consists of one uh, full time student at this time. So, we have approval as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. As presented. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. I would also like to offer uh, congratulations and best wishes to both Don Moon and Sherry West for many years of uh, loyal, dedicated service to St. Craig Central as teachers and hope for the best in the upcoming retirement. Congratulations to those two. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the next item, which is our student enrollment update. This month, February, we have 1,492 students in seats, uh, and um, as compared to 482 from last month, and again, that's some of the students that came back from uh, virtual school at semester time. Um, speaking of uh, lunch, pre reduced lunch rates at 23.09%. So that's 22% of our students that have families um, that have applied for pre or reduced lunch and, qual and uh, qualified for that. Um, <clears throat> or 37.5. Nice. <clears throat> Usually run between 35 and 40 percent. Um, in regards to open enrollment, we have 373 students open enrolled in. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, 270 though, two of those are in our virtual school, 100 of them are in seats. And we have again 272 in our virtual school open enrolled in, 165 of our district residents attend virtual school full time, and 37. Um, again, thank uh, all the ladies that work on this report monthly to get it down to uh, be perfect back. So very important for a number of things, especially the finances. So thank you, ladies, for a very detailed effort for you. So Okay, are there any questions with regards to the student enrollment update? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the uh, staff, student, and community recognition. Uh, Devin Wosley, congratulations on 
being selected as the first team member of the 2021 Middle Border All Conference Wrestling Team. Teague Holzer, Tayden Holzer, and Josh Bear. Uh, congratulations on their selection as Middle Border Second Team All Conference Wrestlers. Uh, David Olson, Owen Wasley, Parker Shackleton. Uh, congratulations as they were selected as honorable mention members of the Middle Border All Conference Wrestling Team. And then Jacob Sanders, congrats. Jacob, on being selected as a first team all conference middle border defense or defenseman for the 2021 season. <laughs> There's a blue line and a red line, right? In a crease. They play on skate. I know that. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like trying to make sure it's it just as hard as the basketball boy. What's worse? Yeah. Okay. So well, congratulations to all. Thank you for those that submitted those names and congratulations to the uh, students for the recognized for their hard work. Also requested uh, keep those uh, recognitions and commendations coming in. I appreciate that. Uh, no question. Yes. Uh, Jacob, you're going to have to just spark that. I know that we had someone come in and present and ask kind of about the, the lettering last spring. There was a decision, but I thought we were going to do a follow up on that kind of later. I thought Brian was going to come back to us because there was going to be another discussion. Yeah, um, and I think that I would anticipate that coming back probably next month. Could be coming back more towards that season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If the middle border conference doesn't make a decision on that. Okay. We have a Okay, I, I wasn't, I just yeah. remember yeah. that. I just, it's been a while, so I didn't recall oh, what I it think, was. I think it's a valid point. Uh, we were going to see what decisions are made and how the season went. Okay. Catch up to speed the end is we had one of our student athletes in there last summer. A little distressed. But, uh, the seniors last spring we didn't participate in the spring before because they were retroactively awarded as the letter, whereas the other class one were not. Discuss it and if those that qualified participated in this upcoming spring that was sports for that spring that participated in the latter and that season that we On the back, time's just fine, but there's still problems. our fund 46 account active, we are required to approve a capital improvement plan. So the plan that is in front of you is the updated from last year. Um, mostly the highlighted items are just updating the year when some things were set to be replaced in 2020. And obviously now we're into 2021. So we've moved them forward a year. Two things I do want to point out is under the flooring schedule for the middle school, 
we did add some tile in room 202 instead of carpeting. So that room is now tiled. And then out at the high school, that hallway that goes back behind the library has also been replaced and that was added on here. Everything else was already on here and just updating the beauty again. If you flip to the last page, you can see the cost by year and the total amount of the projects that are on the list. Right now we have $53.05 in the account. So it's not gonna go far, but um, we are able to spend those funds now if we want to, or we can leave them in there and hopefully add to them in the future. Just to the answer, anybody watching this tape at home, just kind of the history of 146 and the requirements that we have. So Fund 46 was implemented about six or seven years ago. Actually, I think it was six years ago. And so we decided to open up a Fund 46 account so that, you know, at the end of the year, we have all our expenditures for the year. We have all our revenues that come in and we have budgeted amounts and they don't always equal. So this would be a way that we could set aside money for facility type projects and we wouldn't have to spend them by June 30th of that given year. We would be able to transfer it over to the next year and have more time to spend those funds. And if funds part of it, fund 46 had to be started in that year to take advantage of it, had to be started and funded, if I remember right. It didn't have to be started in the first year, but okay. you had to wait five years from the date that it was originally started. So that fund is funded is through surplus funds at the end of the year. We could designate a portion of our budget to put in there if we wanted to. And yes. This is just a capital budget. Yeah. yeah. Right. But historically, we have to spend everything in the year to get it. This is the only way that they've given us to push to store funds until you have enough to pay for a project. Mm -hmm. You have to have a plan and you're for the year. Right. Um, Second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. I've got a couple of questions uh, for Greg. You hear me, Greg? Yep, I can hear you. I saw that there were a couple of projects for uh, roof replacement at the elementary school. Uh, where are we on that as far as condition of that roof? Uh, <clears throat> the two roofs at the elementary is the art and uh, music room roof and the kindergarten roof. They're in uh, fairly good shape right now, uh, but um, I haven't got any bids or anything like that yet. Um, they're, they're doing okay. Um, our neighbor's trees are are eroding the kindergarten roof quite badly. So I'm worried more about that roof more than the other one. Okay, are there any other uh, projects on the list that uh, you feel are in critical need at this time? Um, there are, a, um, one of, the, one of the things that I'd like to do that's never really been on a list, but over at the bus garage, there's a little shed over there that uh, is a wooden shed, and it stores a little bit of Brian's equipment and our ground screw equipment. It sure would be nice someday if we could uh, knock that down and replace it with a more sturdy building that would uh, serve us better there. It wouldn't be too awful much money, but it, it would be nice to replace that. That's something our construction classes could do. Excuse me, I didn't hear that. Is that something our construction classes at the high school could do? Our trace classes? Uh, it's a possibility. Um, we would have to um, have it knocked down. We could have uh, a company come in to knock it down. Um, we'd have to, there's electricity that's attached to it. Have the electric company take that away, have it knocked down, and uh, it could be a project that uh, 
they could do, we'd have to pour a, a new slab of cement for it. Yeah, it could be done. Okay, I will take that into consideration. Yes, yeah, that'd be nice. Right. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to accept uh, the uh, report that's presented to us. Any further questions? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is consideration of short term borrowing. Jen, I'm going to turn that over to you. All right, you should have the loan documents in front of you as a handout. Um, we're, I went to the bank because we have $5 million worth of debt service payments that are due the end of this month. So right now, over the past couple of months, we've been receiving all of our tax levy money and that's been coming in. And then by March 1st, we have these debt service payments are due. So this year, because of our large prepayment that we're doing and the way that we refinanced our debt, we weren't able to push it off until later in the summer. So like last year, we did our prepayment in June so that we wouldn't have to borrow. Because of the refinancing, we weren't able to do that again this year. So right now we have about 3.6 million. Tina said we received another 1.4 million today. So by the time we get all our tax money and we'll have enough to cover our debt payments and we should have a little bit to cover that first payroll in March, but we're probably not gonna have enough to get through that second payroll. We receive our state aid payments and our per pupil adjustment aid both on March 22nd, I think it is, whatever that Monday is. And so that's kind of our target date that we have to get to. <laughs> so I went to the bank and had them drop the papers. Um, this one is a little bit different than what we've had in the past. Um, Steve set it up for us as a line of credit so that we can access it through June 30th because sometimes the beginning of June, we also have to borrow. And so this would make it so that we would be good till June. If we did need to borrow again in June, we would be able to do that without any further action from the board. Obviously, I would come back and let you guys know if we, if we are needing to do that. That would be, that would be appreciated. Well, if there's no prepayment, but it's a line of credit, if we take 300000 against the line of credit, that's not payable, and it, it's payable upon maturity, but, there is, but we're not allowed to prepay. We can prepay. Yeah. So we can take we can take money out as we need it. Okay, this says we can't, and this number two. The way Steve explained it to me is that we could borrow whatever we needed. So let's say for that first payroll in March, we need 100,000. Say we don't need the full 600. We could borrow 100. And then when we get to the March 20th payroll, we could borrow the other 500 if we need it. And then once we get our state aid, we pay that back. And then in June, if we need to borrow again, we would be able to borrow those funds again because they would be paid. Yeah, so it'd be kind of like- Well, I do kind of, that's not what they said. <laughs> that might be what they're willing to do, but that's not what they're It's, it's a that I questioned before. Yeah. yeah. That's how he is, that's how he explained it, so. So otherwise, I believe the document is the same as as what we had. Um, if you remember last, I think it was at the November board meeting, we approved a short term note. So that was a little bit different in that we could only borrow from it once. Once it was paid back, that was the end of it. Is that a better way to do it than to do a lot of credit? I mean, I'm just thinking like it is if we only need if we know what we need, we need it once. 
months, right? But this right. This, is, this is more open ended for the duration, so we don't have to do multiple. Yes. You know, um, closing costs and multiple um, documents and approvals. There are no costs for the loan. No front end costs. No front end costs, just the interest costs. I think Steve felt that this would serve our needs the best, seeing there might be a possibility that we will have to borrow again in June. And then he wouldn't have to go through because he has stuff on his end that he has to get it approved too. So this is saying, okay, it's approved. We're good through June 30th. If we need to borrow from it more than once, we are able to do that. Yeah, and because it expired June 30th, it's one of these things that has to be approved at the end of the year. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, anybody have a chance to read this yet? Or you think about that? Is the resolution supposed to be adopted on the last day of session? So that was our lead. That gave um, authority to do this. That's okay, though. So that that we already did the last two pages and so it's just over I just I mean I, I just question that I don't I don't feel strongly about it either way, which is whether it was supposed to be whether we should have a line of credit. You know, I mean just the ability to access the funds at any time and be giving now to me that makes a lot of sense. In a business, but should that be something that we do as a school district so that we have the ability to do that? You know, I mean, I just, or should we be required to every time this happens, you know, have that? I, I don't know. Let's raise that issue. I feel strongly on that. Well, the district has given us, the electors has given us the authority to borrow $1,000 a year. Not any year, but this year. Typically, we move at the end of May of each year. Mm -hmm. One of the resolutions for the for the electors. So, yeah, to me, whether we put it on the line of credit or we have to go back and talk to them, they have to pay a little money on the line of credit. Yeah, mine is just the policy question. I mean, it certainly makes a lot of sense logistically to me. Well, it can't be accessed unless it's unless there's actual action taken. So it's not like it's not like two months from now, Jim can go in there and decide that the district needs two hundred thousand dollars on our line of credit, and then the has to come to the board. The board has to approve that we're doing it. And not with the line of credit. Please, you can go get it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. But it would be payable to the district, not to them. So that's a good right. <laughs> so I could call them up and say for the April 20th payroll, we need $200,000. And then they would deposit that into the district's account to cover that. And the district would be liable for the interest cost for that. And then I would come to the board and say, we needed to borrow to make payroll. This is how much it cost. Or if we can do it in advance, you know, depending on the timing of board meetings, then I could let you guys know ahead of time. I always would let Howard know ahead of time 
and if there was anyone else that wanted me to let them know ahead of time, I can certainly do that. So your expectation is that you would take a draw on there, and then the second draw, if we need it for that other for the next next payroll. And what do you anticipate would be the, the biggest amount we would take out? Probably not all six hundred thousand. We probably are going to need all six hundred. Okay, for that other payroll, we need to right? Because we're about five hundred thousand per payroll. And that would be in March. March. Yes. And then our proceeds come the twenty second. So theoretically, in that case, we could pay it back right away. Yeah. So, it's really just a few days because right. that payroll is on the 19th. It's right. That one day. So that's where I'm still hung up with that number two on the front page of the contract that we can't pay it back. Yeah. I mean, I asked him about that too, and he's that was how he explained it to me. So I can certainly go back. And, pause. Has it read the same? Have I brought this up every time? The question the same thing. You know, I, I, I really well, the bank can know. waive that restriction. Yeah, if in <laughs> practice, if in practice, and if by it, can do it, then I'm fine. With it. We all know where he lives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to be a monkey there. We're going to get a lot bigger. Okay, are there any other questions on this? Otherwise, I entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Okay, I have a motion. Scott, do I have a second? Second. Okay, second. Brian, approve. Honestly, note. Uh, Borrowing of six hundred thousand dollars is authorized uh, by uh, the district electors resolution. So, be the line of credit. So. Is it your recommendation that this that you prefer this line of credit for your operations? I think it actually makes sense, just because I do think we are going to need to borrow a little bit in June again. So instead of going ahead with paperwork now, paperwork again in June, we can do it once. I can let you guys know if we do have to borrow in June, and we won't have to go through the process again. And you're and you're representing them. It's not that we're going to take it out in March and not pay it until June 30. You know, no. Yeah. Around and then pay yeah. It again. yeah. So part of the problem, Dan, is that uh, we'll the school funding the way it is. I understand the issue. They, yeah. they don't divide it up into equal portions. Well, and this takes you a few hours of time to, to, to go through all of this each time. And you got to talk to Steve. That's your thing. Yeah. That is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any other further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So just a, a quick thought for next year, um, you know, after the annual meeting, would it be something you guys would be interested in in doing a line of credit again, like we could do it in August or September, and then we wouldn't really have to worry about it for the year? Or would you rather wait until we actually need to borrow and then do a... I personally think it makes more sense to wait until there's clarity on, on what the timeline and what what might what the issues might be. But we did have one year when we didn't need to do it. Every once in a while we do, you know? So, so. And now this year is twice because of payroll timing and money when it's coming in compared to when most payrolls are. So, so that was the year we passed the referendum, right? We were able to Use those funds somehow to be able to get a joint request or something? No. no. Referendum <laughs> funds are always kept separate. Maybe it was the insurance. The higher, that's the same time. That, 
it might have been. I think that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, was the fire proceeds because they had given us a certain amount up front. Yeah. But no, anytime we have referendum proceeds, those things got those are always kept um, in a completely separate vein. There's another very too, right? Three payments of that time in impact as well. Those are yeah, the the actual debt service payments are always due at the same time. But last year we did a prepayment and this year we're do, doing that prepayment as well. So that's where we usually have a little bit of flexibility, but we didn't this year because it was part of that whole refinancing of the 19 million. So we had to pay, we have to pay that out on February 28th. Actually it's the 26th because of the way the weekend falls, but. So we didn't have as much flexibility this year as we did last year. Okay, and I think we've handled that. So we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is to designate 2021 Higher Education Academic Excellence Scholarship recipient to our board policy 451. So, uh, let's we'll look here from Travis Madigan. Stating that our awardee for the academic excellence scholarship goes to Kate Holder. Uh, for policy that will go to the award recommended awardee or the next one on the list at any time of the start. So, with that, uh, that policy, we need a motion to accept the award of that young Mr. Holder. So moved. Second. We have a motion, Kirk. Second, Scott. The award Scott Higher Education Academic Excellence Scholarship, Kate Holder. So, uh, congratulations, Mr. Holder, for uh, uh, your hard work in academic yeah. Okay, our next one, our next item on the agenda is to designate a 2021 Wisconsin Technical Education. And Mr. Madigan is recommending that the recipient is Madeline Anderson. So, we need a motion. So moved. Okay, second. Second. And a motion, Brian. Second, Kirk. The award for technical excellence scholarship. 2021 to Madeline Anderson. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And congratulations, Madeline, on the hard work and technical excellence. And, uh, we wish both Madeline and Kate the very best in the future. I guess this is Okay. With that, is there any other business we need to cover? Okay, hearing none, uh, for the upcoming dates, we can see March 1st, we have our board learning meeting here at 6.30. March 15th is our regular board meeting at 7 p.m. here in the district office. And with that, uh, we need a motion to go into closed session for Wisconsin State Statute 1985-1E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investment of public funds, or conducting other specified public business 
whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a full inspection. This is to discuss uh, possible hiring of uh, construction management. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Motion, Brian. Second, Scott. Do you have a second? Okay. Brian. Okay. Okay, let's take a two minute break. Thank you.